Welcome to this video everybody. In today's video we're going to be covering a very annoying problem and that is iCloud in combination with a Windows computer. So what will happen to everybody eventually is you're going to run out of your space on your iCloud and you're going to have to figure out some ways to clean it up. So my idea was just to download the extension on my Windows computer and have everything download to this computer and then just sort out the files locally on my computer, which would be a lot easier. Back up some of the stuff that I don't need to be in the clouds, like large videos. Since 4K60, I should mostly take up a lot of space, get a bunch of those videos out, put them into a separate hard drive, do a couple of backups, and then delete them off iCloud. However, I got stuck on the very first step, which was downloading the files off iCloud, because what happened was this. I installed the, the first problem was I installed the application, which you can just get download from Apple here, or you can go into uh, a Windows shop, whatever they call that thing, and download from there. Actually, this link goes to Microsoft Store. There we go. So just download this thing. The older version is no longer available. Um, which you might find a uh, reference in some of the other videos on YouTube. That is no longer the case, but I'm going to show you how to get around all the issues that you're going to come across. If you have a large iCloud account, like two terabytes, like I do, you are probably not going to have your main hard drive be the size, be able to swallow all that data up, okay, if you want to download everything off uh, onto your local computer. So you're going to want to position this I iCloud Photos uh, folder somewhere else. However, when you go into Options, there is no option to change the location. It just says iCloud Photos, upload and store your uh, PC photo library in iCloud and access photos and videos from your device. So it goes up and down. It's, it's like a syncing service, okay? So it just syncs across all your devices. Uh, things are gonna download to this folder and things that you put into this folder are gonna upload across to your other devices. However, it does not allow you to set the location. Uh, whereas here, for those shared albums, you can set the location, that's fine. However, this one you cannot. And this is the first big problem that I came across. So I'm gonna, now if you go and look up for solutions on YouTube, um, you're gonna get people suggesting that you actually link the two locations to your outside location and that those files are actually gonna be, uh, there's only gonna be shortcuts in the primary location and all the files are gonna actually be stored on the secondary location, which unfortunately is not the case. I have checked it and I can show you that with screenshots that in fact what happens is all files get uploaded to both locations. Here is an example of a screenshot I took uh, not too long ago, around 1 p.m. And I'm gonna show you an example that I took earlier at 10.55. And you can see that both of these drives are actually filling up. We went from 421 to 440. This is my primary C drive, which is a difference of 19 gigabytes. And this is my secondary, like four terabyte SSD that I was planning on using as a backup for all these uh, uh, for all these files and you can see that it's gone from 485 all the way to 505 so that is 20 gigabytes difference so it's fill up both hard drives so this linking situation does not solve the problem so what does so just a little extra information here about these links they're called symbolic links and here in this video they tell you that these links don't take up any space that they just point you into the direction of where the actual files are stored however in my case that is not the case as i have shown you the files are getting stored in both locations and that is obviously not <laughs> what you want okay it's actually a fairly simple solution even though know, it is not ideal because you will have to move your entire photos library okay so we have to think in terms of libraries not in terms of folders because that's the way apple thinks that's the way apple operates on their ios and that's the way they operate on windows even though in windows we don't really do that kind of crap so i'm going to hit done here and i'm going to now show you how you can do that so this is my photos folder and uh, as you can see these things are getting downloaded uh, but that's a separate problem that we're going to uh, that we're going to deal uh, after we talk about the location problem because there's a second problem so stick around for that okay so first of all what you want to want to do is you're going to go into your photos folder right click and you're going to actually not photos you can't you can't move photos location but you can move pictures so you right click and you go properties and then you go location and then here you can actually move the location so now you can go ahead and move it to your d drive so go down here, go to your D drive, and now create the folder, and then move it to that location, okay? Instead of going through all that rigmarole of trying to link the two locations, and then it doesn't actually bring you any benefits. So the downside of this approach is you're going to have to move all of your files over to the other location, which you may or may want to do. So, but it's not a huge sacrifice. Um, <clears throat> but the benefit is everything's gonna get moved over there, and it's going to only occupy a single location and it can be a much larger file, uh, sorry, a much larger drive, so you can have plenty of space there. But once you've got that problem sorted, if we now go into the iCloud Photos, 
I can show you I have it in both locations, but it, there, there's a very important difference between the two locations. So here, in this primary location on my C drive, so this is located on my C drive, even though you can't see it. Um, you can see these green uh, tick boxes here, okay? Whereas if I go to my secondary location, which is here, you will see I have the same stuff, but I don't have the tick boxes. So why not? Well, as a secondary location, this is not considered a cloud location. And being a cloud location is a separate entity, a separate with uh, additional properties, uh, which allow you to manage those files. Uh, my, my initial fear was as soon as I down, uh, as soon as I install my um, iCloud um, drive, it's going to download all the files off the internet and it's going to completely fill up my hard drive and my computer is going to stop working. But that's not the case. It initially, what it does, it only indexes all those files and then it only downloads them as required. But how do you actually get them to download? Well, there's a couple of approaches. You can go individually. Whereas I go here and try and click to download, I don't have that option as you can see here. Okay. But if I go into the original, I can right click and I have a bunch of additional options. So I can do always keep on this device. Okay, and this is, you can see is ticked off here and that's what why you see is a green and, and it's like a solid green tick box. Uh, that means it is on this device and it's always going to stay on this device. Now if we scroll down, we're going to see that these are looking a little bit different. Um, now these have been downloaded, but these are not exclusively on this device. This will upload and download as necessary, okay? So if I go here, you can see always on this device is not ticked off, but I can tick it off and it's actually going to then make sure it stays on this device. But there is a third icon that we're going to find, which will go a little bit further down. And it could be a lot further down, in fact. <clears throat> there are so many files, as you can see, and Windows is just not really particularly good at handling folders with a large number of files in them, just kind of randomly uh, thrown in there. Um, so let me just see, hold on, how far, yeah. We're still here, I just keep going a little bit further down. Yeah, we're still there. And you see the way they have multiple files have same names, they're all kind of jumbled and mixed together. So that's not ideal either. There's no folders, there's no um, organization to these things, although there is a way to do that as well. Okay, that's not a good time. Um, there is a way to do that as well. I'm going to show you that in a minute. If you open this in the Photos app, so if you go right click, open with, and you open it with the Photos app, this app actually has the ability to organize this by date, for example. But it's clunky, it's weird. Oh my God, now everybody's gonna start annoying me. We need to continue to go down. Okay, so uh, I have to get down to the cloud icon. I think we are approaching it. Uh, so 89, around 89, let's see. Okay, there we go. We got all the way down to these clouds. Okay, so here you see these clouds. Uh, this one just ticked over. Okay, so these are getting downloaded. Why are they getting downloaded? Well, I will show you that in a minute. Just one quick extra bit of information here. If you no longer want to keep files on your local computer, you can just right click on them and then go free up space. Okay, now it doesn't have either one ticked off, but let's say it was ticked off, this one was ticked on, and it had that green, solid green color. I would just go free up space and it will actually push it back into the cloud and it will only keep an index file on your computer which takes up virtually no space and you would get you would go back to this cloud icon here you need an application to start the download process now it could be the photos app but that photos app is buggy and so far i find it terrible even though it does have it can organize those photos for you to like by date it's it's just clunky and but maybe i'm just not used to using it maybe i need to learn how to use it properly but for me it's extremely awkward there is an application that i use for watching uh videos i'm uh, sorry photos on my computer and it's free of charge and it is actually really really good and i'm going to show that to you right now I just want to make sure i don't disclose any private photos um two seconds now okay i'm going to bring this over now and then you can see these are actually being downloaded here as you can see this, but this one isn't. So 91 is the next one to get downloaded. It's a movie, so it's gonna take a, a little bit longer. And sometimes it jumps over a movie and continues on with the images. And then at some stage comes back and downloads the movie as well. But this is the application. So it's the Fatstone Image Viewer. And this is actually causing the images to, to be, to be, to, to get downloaded. If you don't have an application using it, I'm actually gonna move it, ah, there we go. You can see that they're actually being downloaded and um, that is being caused by the application. If there isn't an application open uh, pulling these photos off of the cloud, they're not going to download. I had this application uh, uh, iCloud on my computer for months, like probably since like November, and it hasn't really downloaded almost anything. 
Whereas today it's already done with 20 gigabytes of data because I've had uh, Faststone open. So that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to have an application open that's going to be pulling those uh, files off of the cloud onto your local computer. Um, <clears throat> that's one way you can do it. Or you can just go ahead and you know highlight a bunch of these photos and go right click and you can go always keep on this device and that's going to download them as well. So there are two ways you can do it. It's kind of more of hands off if you have an application doing it or you can just do it manually. If, but if you don't do too many at once because it can really bog down the computer, especially if it's not a very powerful computer. I tried it on my old computer and uh, it just stopped working and even my microphone stopped working <laughs> overnight. I left it overnight and, and nothing got downloaded and it just was overwhelmed, I believe. So this computer that I have now is quite a modern computer. I bought it last year uh, and it is an i5. Okay, there we go. So it's a 12th gen um, i5 12600K and 32 gigs of RAM. Okay, so it is a, it, it's a beef enough computer. Uh, quite capable and it is managing to handle these files a lot better. Older, slower computers might struggle. So now there's a third way you can do it, uh, handle these files, and it might be the best way if you're on a Windows computer because everything's so clunky and slow and awkward. You can just go into your actual iCloud, so sign in and go into your iCloud photos, and then you can just individually select or you can do multiple if you hold down shift and I hold down control and I can just pick the individual files. Now the really important thing to remember here is now when you go to download it, don't just hit this uh, icon here because it's going to download low resolution versions of it or optimized versions of it. So you have to go down here into the three dots and then click more download options and then make sure this unmodified original is ticked and then hit download. Okay, and that is going to download. You then can just use the location. So I'm going to just put it here in my pictures or I can go into my downloads, for example, and it is going to download those photos in the zip file. And they will be the high quality photos if you do it the way I showed you. If you don't, you're going to get low quality compressed photos. So um, you can, uh, obviously you have all the folders, you have all the dates and everything within your iCloud here online, and you can download either individual types of files like large video files, or you can download certain like older photos that you don't want to have on your iCloud anymore, or you can, you know, you can manage things much better this way, as opposed to trying to download the entire collection onto your computer and having a big jumbled mess of files. And, um, you know, be, being much more difficult to manage than that way. But these are the three options that you can do. These are how you can come across or overcome some of the difficulties that I came across. And I hope you found this video useful. And uh, that's it. And uh, hopefully any other questions, put them in the comments below. Check the description and the comments. I may put some updates in there below as well, some links. And um, ask the questions around. I'll be happy to answer them. All right, cheers, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.